Greetings, YouTube. Today I'm going to talk about the second Dirty Harry movie, Magnum Force. Now, in the first Dirty Harry movie, we've established the character. Clint Eastwood has walked into what is quite possibly his most famous role as Dirty Harry, the man that wields the most powerful handgun in the world, at least the most powerful handgun in the world at the time of the filming. Um, it has been surpassed as of today. Um, but in Magnum Force, he didn't just walk back into that role and make another Dirty Harry movie. He was playing the character Dirty Harry, but in this film, I think Eastwood really showed how Dirty Harry was very much taking a mirror and pointing it at American society. And he was reflecting the conflicting goals and desires that existed at the time of the writing, not necessarily the filming. Now in Dirty Harry, they really dealt with the whole concept that suspects have rights. And sometimes these rights can work against the system. The whole concept of Miranda rights and things like that was a relatively new idea. It was a, a very much of a perceived as a liberal um, uh, position, and it is a liberal position, that people have rights. Um, and how this can conflict with the process of finding uh, criminals, charging them, trying them, the whole nine yards. And the second Hair Dirty Harry movie, Magnum Force, really dealt with the conflicting drives of justice and the conflicting drive of revenge. And they are very much on a scale. When you have more of one, you have less of the other. As the justice goes up, you have less vengeance because the rule of law is in charge. And when you have more vengeance, you have less of the other because there is less rule of law. And that's really what this film is about. The dichotomy, the pull and tug between those two concepts. Which do you want? Do you want justice? Do you want revenge? Do you like vengeance, or do you like the rule of law? So in the film, we have a number of characters introduced to us. You have a group of a small group of brand new, fresh, shiny, spanky cops. You know, they're just out of the academy. They're ready to go and go and go out there and and save the world. Um, the chips, I think, is what they would properly be called. Cause they're all motorcycle cops. Um, and then you have a new character in that a more experienced member of this unit who knows Dirty Harry from a previous relationship, and he's just disgusted with the world. He's been pushed to the limit, but he's not just going to quit. He's not going to retire. He, you're not going to get him out of this job. You're going to have to gun him down, which is just a smidge prophetic. Um, so you begin to see that, you know, all is not happy amongst the police officers that are supposed to be doing the whole protect and serve business. And of course you have Dirty Harry, who is that very kind of casualness a lot of the time about what he does. You know, he, he is kind of the epitome of the concept of uh, a phrase which I learned from reading about special forces, and that it's fast is slow, slow is fast. And what that means is that if you hurry, you will screw up and you will make the process longer. But if you are slow and deliberate and direct, even though you don't think it's going to get things done in time, it will because you're not screwing up and having to do it over again. And I think Dirty Harry really represents that kind of uh, attitude brought to life. He's deliberate. He's measured. He is never hurried. He does what has to be done, and in those few moments when action is called for, he's there. But he applies it the way it needs to be applied. In some ways, uh, I think Derry Harry could be viewed as a samurai, in, in all seriousness. Um, no hesitation between thought and action. So you have a few red herrings in the film. You get to see uh, things go in one direction, and when they're actually going in another direction. 
Now, eventually, of course, you discovered that the shiny new cops are actually a hit squad. And they're taking out the bad guys. And their the definition of bad guy is pretty much anyone they don't like, or the guy in charge of this unit, which is actually part of the brass, anyone he doesn't like. Now, there are a few things that don't make a lot of sense. Some of these crimes take place in broad daylight. I mean, like, they stop a car, like, alongside the road on a bridge or something like that, and the guy just guns down a car full of mobsters. Yeah, it's unbelievable. And then we had a pimp driving the coolest pimp car you've ever seen, man. It was just decked out in big pipes and flames and blingy things. It was absurd. It was great. Driving off into this distant, out of the, out of, you know, nowhere road that goes to, you know, it looks like it would just go to a dirt farm somewhere, you know what I mean? Why a pimp is going down this road, it makes no sense, but it gave a nice secluded spot so he could be gunned down. So why they weren't concerned about gunning down mobsters in the streets, but they were concerned about gunning down a pimp in the, in the middle of nowhere, I don't know. And one thing I liked about the, uh, the kill hit squad they used, it was four um, motorcycle cops, is they dressed them identically, not just necessarily in the same uniforms, because they were in uniforms, they were in uniforms, That's, hence the word means, uniform. But they all had the same glasses. Everything was about them was identical, so they came across as very robotic. It was very much Terminators. Identical individuals, completely inter... And that gave them a cool, cold, distant look. Very well done. And of course, Eventually, Harry has to confront these individuals because, you know, they're on the side of vengeance, and in this particular role, Harry is the side, side of justice and the rule of law. Now, the end scene, the great climax, I think was rather well done. It was kind of enjoyable, it was fun, but there was a couple of guffaws. They had an explosive device in the film that I guess was supposed to have been planted by the squad of cops, Except, I don't think any of them should have been able to know how to build a bomb. They're cops. Cops don't build bombs, folks. Then there was uh, a scene where Harry needs to take somebody out in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and that isn't what Harry does, folks. Harry shoots things. That's what he's got that big-ass 44 Magnum for he carries around so much. Oh yeah, and the opening scene of this film is this just gun porn shot of the pistol in the center of the screen. It was very funny. Um, and then there's a, there's a scene at the end where he has to take out one of these cops hand to hand. And he like karate chops the guy repeatedly in the neck, which I don't think would have killed him and which it seemed completely out of character for Harry. I, I didn't like it. But it's an excellent film. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was an appropriate sequel to, to Dirty Harry. Um, a couple of things I found interesting. One is that Fan, female fans wrote in after the Dirty Harry movie and said they wanted to see Dirty Harry have a love interest. But they didn't want to see Dirty Harry as the aggressor. They wanted to see him be receptive to a woman making an advance. So in this film, we have the ex-wife, that really volatile one that was vowing to be gunned down so prophetically. Why you'd want to hit on her, his ex-wife, I'm not sure, but she makes a pass. He doesn't necessarily say no, but it doesn't go anywhere. And then we, he encounters this woman that lives in the building he lives in, this rather attractive Asian woman. I think she might have been Chinese or Korean, I can't remember. Um, and she basically walks, walks up and looks him straight in the eye and says, what does a girl have to do to sleep with you? And he smiles in a way that only Clint Eastwood can smile. And says, have you tried knocking on his door? And then, you know, of course, she does. But one of my... One of the commenters uh, in discussing the Dirty Harry movies, uh, Click Clack Bang, um, the gentleman gamer, commented that he thought that the fact that the Dirty Harry's partner in this movie was killed was, was a cliché. And he's right, it is a cliché. But it was this movie that established that cliché. It wasn't that Dirty Harry was emulating cl the cliché that had existed before and it was just a poorly written script. No. This was the film that established the cliché of a main character cop having a partner that dies. So it wasn't a cliché when Dirty Harry did it, it was just part of the plot. Of course, when it, when it's something that it, when it basically happened again in the third film, yes, it is now officially a cliché. But in Dirty Harry and in Magnum Forest, it hadn't been an established cliché yet, so 
You can't argue that it was. So, if you like Dirty Harry, you're going to love Magnum Force. I don't think it's as strong as Dirty Harry, but it's a great film. It's a lot of fun, um, and the commentary track was quite enjoyable. So, I would recommend it to anyone who's an Eastwood fan. And seeing as how many Eastwood movies I've reviewed and watched in the last year, I guess that makes me a pretty big fan.